Welcome back class. We have finished up spiritual monism and we're about to go into dualism but we need to deal with this question about the material world. Spiritual monism says that all that exists is spirit or mind and ideas. Dualism affirms that there, are, there is a material world. Uh, they will say matter is eternal and the soul is eternal. But how do we know that there is a material world? Have you ever wondered this? Uh, am I in a virtual reality? Uh, if you've seen the movie The Matrix, they play with that, right? All of us are connected to this virtual reality. Uh, when I was a student, we had the problem of the brain in a vat. My teacher said, imagine you are a brain in a vat being stimulated by a scientist who's on the other side of the computer and they're saying, simulate philosophy class, beep, and so your brain is in a vat, and now you have this experience of a philosophy class. Well, how do we know if that's true or not? How do we know what's outside of us is real? This is a problem for metaphysics, and it's a problem that philosophers have dealt with. One philosopher who dealt with this was Rene Descartes. He uh, had a method of doubt. He wanted to know what he could know for certain. He's like, what can I know without doubting it? So he uh, went into his study and he started to think about things that were appearing to him and he thought, well, I could doubt my senses and he thought I could doubt tradition that was handed down to me. I could doubt what my parents have said, testimony. Um, and so he got to a point where he thought, the only thing that I can't doubt is that I'm the one doing the doubting. And this is where he came up with this phrase that's popular, I think, therefore I am. So he started with himself, and then he tried to work out to the world from himself, which seems like an appropriate thing to do. I mean, we are beings that are self-aware, and we're thinking, so it's self-evident that we think, and we think about things that appear to us, how do we know what appears to us is reality? So this was Descartes' problem too. Um, a lot of people think that he did not offer a sufficient answer to uh, this problem of uh, knowing the world, but he does have an interesting approach. So we're going to borrow from Descartes and his approach, starting from ourselves, and also this is where uh, spiritual monism was dealing with the question of reality starting with the self now they turned inward that the self was what's real and the self is eternal we're going to do another thing so let's look at the handout the argument that the material world exists now the core question that will come from this handout is what is the argument that the material world exists and it's long and there are two sub arguments but I promise you this is the the best argument I, I call it the $50 argument because it's so great um, it will allay so many doubts that you have. All right, so let's read the handout together. Spiritual monism claims that all that exists is mind and ideas. Remember, consciousness. How do we know that there is a material world outside of our minds? Big question, right? So let, we're going to go through uh, a kind of experiment. Think of it as an experiment. Begin with appearances. Something appears to us, right? Something appears to me. Look around. Something appears to you, right? What is the cause of the appearances? So if we go with this idea that things have causes, appearances have causes too. So what could the causes be? There are two options. Mind is the cause, like uh, God maybe, or Brahman, or matter is the cause, like tables. So mind and matter are the two forms of substances that we've talked about and that philosophers have uh, supposed. Now, I do have an argument somewhere that these are the only two substances. I was challenged on that once. Someone said, prove it. So there is a proof out there on the internet somewhere that there are only two substances. If you email me because you want to know, I will find the link for you. That's for the logic class. They go through the argument that there's only two kinds of substances. So what is under mind? There are two options. Maybe it's my mind causing this. 
Maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe I'm projecting it. Or it could be another mind is causing it, like God or Brahman or the evil scientist or Descartes demon. Descartes supposed that an evil demon was causing him to see this. How would we know what is causing the appearances that we see? We can use reason and argument to eliminate some options. So you know how we've been doing that all along. Let's continue with that method and eliminate some things because they don't make any sense. Now, I don't have you in class, but when we have this conversation in class, it's usually fun and students give me a lot of pushback. So I'm just going to anticipate your pushback and uh, push equally back. So you don't have to believe uh, what I say, but you should follow where reason leads. So follow the argument and see if it's sound. Remember, a sound argument has true premises and it's in good form. So rational beings will believe the conclusion to a sound argument. Your job is to test the argument. So there's a major premise. There are two sub arguments, a minor premise and a conclusion. Yes, you should know all of that and you will want to. If you want knowledge, you should know this, right? This is how you get knowledge. All right, the major premise. The cause of what I see is either my mind, another mind, or is outside all minds and really exists, okay? And I put some examples here. My mind could be imagination. Another mind could be Descartes' demon, Shankar's Brahman, or God. And if it's outside of all minds, then it's matter. So mind or matter. My mind, another mind, or matter. Outside all minds, okay? Those are our options. If you can think of another one, please let me know. Okay, sub-argument one. So we're going to do a process of elimination. We're going to eliminate my mind and eliminate another mind so that what we're left with is outside of all minds. Sub-argument one, major premise. If the cause of what I see is my mind, think about that. You're causing everything you see. Then I would have total control, all control over what I see next. If I'm the cause of this, then I could see what I want to see. And what I would want to see is students in a classroom, right? Or students on a beach with more coffee. Mm. But guess what? I do not have total control over what I see next. So the conclusion is, I do not have total control over what I see next. The conclusion is the cause of what I see is not my mind. Now you can think about that. Do you have total control over what you see next? I don't. Try it. All right, so what have we done? We've eliminated the cause as my mind. So it's not my mind. What about another mind? Let's consider another mind is causing this, like God or Brahman or Descartes' demon. Major premise. If the cause of what I see is another mind, then I would have no control over what I see next. Uh, I couldn't even look down like this. So, uh, you know who's not here today? Kino. He did not want to come out here today. So, if I had total control, I'd have Kino in here with me. But, no. If the cause of what I see is another mind, then I would have no control over what I see next. Minor premise. It's not the case that I have no control over what I see next. I have some control. I have intentionality. I can intend to look down, and I could look down. I have intentions. I can intend to close my eyes and not see anything, right? So the conclusion is, the cause of what I see is not another mind. Now I know, I know what you're saying. Well, maybe that evil scientist that has your brain in a vat is also feeding in uh, the idea to look down when you look down. Let's play with that. So I mentioned intentionality, that when I look down, I intend to look down first, right? I have an intention to close my eyes. Now, intentions are mine. I can't doubt that I intended to look down, right? So intentionality is uh, self-certifying. They, I can't doubt my intentions. Uh, I can't doubt that I'm doubting, right? 
because then I'm doubting that I'm doubting and I'm intending to doubt. So intentions are my own. They cannot be fed in. And even if they could be fed in, how would I know the difference between my intentions and apparent intentions? I would have no way of knowing that, right? Um, so we would, we would lose all meaning. Furthermore, if my intentions are not my own, then what am I? This is where free will comes in, freedom to think. Um, maybe I don't have the freedom to change my, what appears to me, my environment, but I have some freedom. I could close my eyes and not see it, or I could turn around and not see it. I can intend. So intentionality is connected with free will. And if there's no intentionality and there's no free will, then I'm not a person who has ideas and thoughts of my own or intentionality, which means I don't have a question about whether the material world exists or not, and I don't really do philosophy. Some other being is controlling me and doing philosophy. So the question is dispelled whether the material world exists or not if I don't have intentions, because I'm the being that's intending to ask the question, is there a material world? Okay, let's review that. So we've been through two options here. The cause of what I see is either my mind, another mind, or it's outside of all minds. We've eliminated my mind because if it was my mind causing this, I'd have all control. Remember the square of opposition, all? If the cause was another mind, I would have no control. These are contraries on the square of opposition and both of them can be false and it turns out they both are false here. So what does that leave us with? Some some control. You have some control and you have some not control. So the minor premise of the whole argument says the cause of what I see is not my mind and not another mind and so the conclusion is the cause of what I see is outside all minds and really exists. It's material. Tables are real. So if you want to see how this argument looks formally, oh I forgot to write the rest of this. Well, uh, Here's what happened. I forgot the name of the argument type and I was going to go look it up and I left it there. Um, disjunctive syllogism. This is extended disjunctive syllogism. You could write it in. My mind or another mind or outside all minds. So that little symbol is an or. My mind, if it was my mind, this is an if then, then I'd have total control. This is a negation, not total control. Therefore, not my mind. Second argument, if it's another mind, then no control. It's not the case that I have no control, so it's not another mind. This is uh, modus tollens, which is a valid argument form. This is modus tollens, which is an argument va valid argument form. This was extended uh, disjunctive. So it's not my mind and it's not another mind, therefore it's outside of all minds. So I wrote this out this way to show you the argument is valid. Now you have to test the premises to see if it's sound. Are these premises true? And if you can come up with a way to get out of it, please let me know. Uh, I love this argument. I've been wrestling with this argument for as long as I've been studying philosophy. It's my favorite. And this is why I think the material world exists. Okay, so from here, now that we have uh, there is mind and there is matter, we could look at dualism, which says both of those are eternal, okay? So we have uh, the existence of spirit, we have the existence of matter, now the question is, are they both eternal? All right, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the unit on dualism.